All right, so for the lecture, it's not necessarily a big lecture. And again, it's like the same pattern from last week. Uh, last week, if you prefer reading on your own, you may. You, uh, by all means, go through the PDF, read chapter seven, and then answer the questions. If not, if you prefer for me to read this, uh, I'll be using my mouse cursor to guide you through this, okay? All right, while Nelson, on uh, chapter seven, Robin Island, while Nelson was in prison, the police searched uh, Lilith Leo and arrested Walter Sisulu and other members of his, a spear of the nation. Luckily, Oliver Tambo was outside of South Africa. When he had heard about the uh, arrest, he knew he couldn't go back. He was determined as ever to help his friends. In October 1963, Nelson went on trial again. He was accused of 222 acts of sabotage between 1961 and 1963. Sabotage means to destroy or disrupt things so that they don't work. For instance, Speer had plans to set off explosions in police stations and other government buildings, but not when people were around. The state asked for a maximum penalty, dead by hanging. The courtroom was tense. The lawyers against Nelson and his friends took five minutes to present uh, their argument. Then in April, uh, April Nelson stood to speak. His elderly mother and his wife watched from the gallery. He offered no evidence in his defense. Instead, he made a statement. We believe that South Africa belongs to all the people who live in it, he said, and not to one group, be it black or white. Nelson spoke about the unjust laws, life in the crowded townships, and the cruel actions of the government. He spoke on the right to vote, the right to ed an education, and the right to be treated with basic respect. For hours, the courtroom listened, spellbound. I have dedicated myself to this struggle of the African people, Nelson said. It is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve. But if needs to be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. After the trial, the judge sentenced Nelson and the other defendants, including Walter Sisulu, to life in prison. Nelson and Sisula were flown to a maximum security prison on the Robbers Island off the coast of Cape Town. No ships were allowed within a mile of the island. Escape was impossible. Mandela was led to, a, to the cell that will be his home for the next 18 years. It was 8 feet wide and 7 feet long, lit by a single 40 watt light bulb. The bulb stayed on day and night. Mandela could walk across the room in three steps. There was a mat for sleeping and three blankets so thin he could see through them. His toilet was small. It was a small iron bucket. All the prisoners on Robin Island were black. All the guards were white. Mandela could write to his family and receive a letter from them only once every six months. Before Nelson was allowed to read a letter, prison officials crossed out anything in the letter they didn't think Nelson should see. Often so many words were crossed out, the letter barely made its sense. Nelson did not see winning for years at a time. He was not allowed to, to attend the funerals of his mother or his eldest son, Dembi, who died in a car accident in 1969. Every day he was woken up at 5.30. He washed and shaved with cold water. He emptied his iron bucket. He was allowed eight squares of toilet paper a day. He ate Taze's porridge for breakfast. Then he went to work either breaking rocks in the courtyard or working in the limestone quarry, digging out heavy slabs of rock with picks and shovels and lifting them onto, you can see the picture right there, onto trucks. The sun was so bright on the limestone, it damaged his eyesight. In the summer, it was boiling hot. In winter, cold and windy. The lime dust stung his eyes and made his hands blister. Information about the outside world came from new, new prisoners, except when guards left newspaper clippings on his on his sleeping mat to let him know that back in Johannesburg, Winnie was being harassed in jail. They did this to show Nelson how powerless he was to help his family. Okay, and that's an illustration of how um, he was probably succumbing through all the emotion and trauma by himself. Um, unfortunately, again, the file was corrupt. So on the on the files, um, I. You won't see anything dealing with this part of the book. Um, but
but just those disregard that this is going to be a an activist who uh, shared a very similar uh, passion about civil rights, uh, just like Nelson Mandela. All right, this concludes the video for this lesson. Again, if you have any questions, send them to me through Teams, and I'll get to you as soon as possible. All right, with that said, I'll see you guys tomorrow.